Well, good morning. Good morning from the Utah Safety Council. We're uh, live here in Salt Lake City. Uh, it's February 1st, 2023. Uh, we are here. Thank you for joining us for our Start with Safety uh, webinar. Uh, we have a very exciting and informative and um, necessary presentation for you today. You know, a lot of uh, talk about AEDs with recent events. Um, and so we're super excited to uh, present uh, today's webinar regarding AEDs. Uh, before we uh, before we start that, though, just uh, quickly wanted to uh, um, welcome you. I'm John Wojcikowski. If you uh, don't know me, I'm the president of the Utah Safety Council. Um, just wanted to say hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to February. I uh, want to remind everybody that we have our uh, March uh, safety conference coming up on the 16th and 17th. Our registration is open. Uh, we will be back live and in person this year up at the University of Utah Rice Cycle Stadium. Uh, our agenda is very exciting. Uh, it's filling up or full. Uh, we have uh, some great keynote speakers I wanted to highlight. We have Kevin Ames. Uh, he's the founder and president of the Ames Leadership Institute. He will kick things off with his keynote presentation on uh, leadership uh, on uh, at nine o'clock on the 16th. Uh, some great breakout sessions. Uh, we also uh, had another keynote speaker will be Matt Pennington from the South Jordan Police Department. He will speak to uh, active shooter events and you know, how to mitigate those. Uh, and then we'll end the day on the 16th with uh, uh, our Salt Lake City Mayor, Mayor Mendenhall. Uh, she will uh, present at our Women in Safety event at the end of the day. Uh, moving on to the 17th, we have a safe start coming in. Um, Joe uh, Tatralini. I know I mispronounced his name, but uh, he's got a great presentation on uh, you know uh, surviving uh, trench collapse. And then we'll wrap up the whole thing with uh, Judy Wanton Wantonby from uh, Utah's Emergency Management Office. And so, if you haven't registered, register uh, now is a good time to do it. March 16th and 17th. Uh, we're excited. It's our comeback conference, uh, back live and in person. Uh, I also wanted to plug our podcast sponsored by the uh, Utah Labor Commission uh, titled Speaking Up for Safety. Uh, that uh, We are rolling with that. We just completed an interview with uh, Kirk Godfrey. He's the uh, new, well, not new. He's been at it for a year as the uh, um, director of the Rocky Mountain Center for Occupational Environmental Health. Uh, partnership now with the University of Utah and Weber State, and you know we sat down with him and discussed what that is, what that looks like, and what they do. And um, uh, that interview should be out here shortly. And you know, once it is, we will email it and put it out uh, on social media. And it's a great listen. And in the meantime, we have several shows out there that you can listen to. Um, all of that is linked on our website at the UtahSafetyCouncil.org. Um, there you can find on our website uh, all the classes and things that we're offering. And, and we're busy at the Safety Council these days now that we're post-pandemic and a lot of the classes are live or in person. But we are continuing a lot of the, uh, the hybrid uh, Zoom classes as well. So lots of opportunities to uh, attend you know, necessary and, and um, you know, needed safety training. So uh, I do want to plug our occupational safety essentials class. I know Brandy will talk about this more, but um, you know this is a great uh, opportunity for new safety managers or uh, uh, safety managers or directors that have been around a minute, good refresher or good introductory just to what we do at the uh, Utah Safety Council. Um, this is a free all day class it includes lunch. Uh, the next one is coming up on the 13th of February. So uh, again, details on that are on our website or you can reach out to us uh, by email at safety at utahsafetycouncil.org. Um, if you haven't, uh, on our website, you can also subscribe to our emails. Uh, we're still putting out our safety notes newsletter. Uh, we have a great one that just came out that kind of highlights uh, the good things that we did in 2023. Um, you know, a great summary of our WISH Award event that was last December at the uh, University of Utah. So uh, if you haven't seen it, go find it, uh, sign up for our email address or our email subscription and uh, go find safety notes. It's, uh, it's also posted on our website. So last thing is our annual awards. Last thing I wanted to mention is our annual awards. 
which will be in August of uh, this year, 2023. Just want to get everybody thinking about uh, nominations, you know, as you wrap up your, your OSHA logs for, uh, you know, 2022. Um, you know, here soon, we're going to start soliciting for uh, nominees for our Lifesaver, our annual Lifesaver Award, a Lifetime Achievement Awards, Individual Achievement and Safety. Uh, we have a couple of driving awards. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, we and our board of directors will start looking at, uh, um, you know, the stats uh, for companies that want to apply for, you know, award of merits. And, you know, of course, uh, we will we'll also award uh, uh, the award of honor. So anyway, uh, annual awards coming up in August. Uh, start thinking about who we'd like to nominate and, uh, you know, stay tuned for, uh, you know, the call for nominees, which will happen uh, here in a few weeks. So with that, I'm going to turn over to our Vice President of Operations, Brandon Crockett, to give us some uh, membership and other updates going on in the Safety Council. And then uh, uh, we'll hear from everybody at the Safety Council as we uh, move into our presentation today. So go ahead, Brandy. Okay, thank you. Um, well, good morning, everyone. I'm super excited to have you with us today. I just wanted to go over a few things, like John said, um, with your membership. Thanks for being a member with the Utah Safety Council. And um, we really try to stress membership is what you put into it. So there's a lot of things that are available to you as members of the Safety Council. And we'd love to see you engaging and, you know, attending every single event that we have, everything that we do. Um, but, you know, sometimes people forget about what those benefits are. So just want to remind you, um, the streaming safety videos, that's something that's, you know, fairly recent. We've always had videos, but these are streaming. And so you can use them, watch them, use them for safety training really anywhere that you are. Um, and we do have company logins for you and your employees to use. Um, and it's a great resource. There's hundreds and hundreds of different videos, different topics. So um, if you're not using that, please let us know. Reach out to us at safety at utahsafetycouncil.org. We'll get you set up. Um, and then a big thing, another reason why people uh, join and sometimes forget about year after year are the free safety courses. So I'll give you dates of those a little in just a second. Um, but the uh, OSHA 10 general industry or construction, first aid CPR. We do have the occupational safety essentials that um, is listed as well, but make sure that you're using those and that you're using them year over year. Um, those are free courses every year that starts over. Um, and then we do have three membership events planned for this year. Um, some holiday stuff and uh, uh, fun golf event. So that'll be that'll be really good to see everybody there. And then uh, a big thing is just making sure that you your membership is um, utilized through discounts on safety trainings and products. Those are the big reasons. Um, and like Don said, we're going to get ready. August seems like a long ways away, especially considering how cold it is. But um, it'll be here before you know it. And we we do call for those awards, um, usually starting in late March, early April. So watch for that to come out as well. So um, there's a lot that goes into your, your uh, member benefits and that's just at the general level. We have contributing and sustaining levels that you get additional benefits for. So the gist of that is just to make sure that you're utilizing what you have access to. And it's not just, you know, you, it's anybody in your company. So, you know, spread the word and let them know that, hey, we, our company is a member of the Utah Safety Council and we have these benefits and it's not just for the safety team or just for the safety person. So um, share that with, with your people as well. So the dates for the free first aid, Brandon, I'll talk about this a little bit as well, but it's very timely considering our topic this month. Um, but we have um, a class on February 9th and March 14th. So those are the next two coming up. If you want to use your member benefit, then you just uh, get with Brandon and his contact information will come shortly and you get signed up and set up for that. The other course that we have um, is uh, Occupational Safety Essentials. John kind of talked about that as well. It's a newer course. It's only probably been around for about a year. Um, all of our staff has sat through it and it's helpful whether you're new to safety or you're a seasoned safety professional. So there's something that you walk away from with this class and we'd love to have you come 
um, any additional people from your business come. So, um, and make sure that that class is free for members. So just use Essentials 2022, sorry, 2023 at checkout. Um, I need to update that. And if you have any, any issues or anything signing up for that, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and then lastly, my last slide, I believe, is um, the on the conference. So John kind of mentioned um, about the conference, just some great keynote speakers that we have, but registration is now open. Um, so in the chat, um, I put the link if you haven't gotten registered. Um, that will lead you to our conference page. And so there you can find out about how, you know, attending as an attendee, or if you want to be an exhibitor or a sponsor, we're still taking those as well for the event. So uh, we're really excited to be back in person for this year. Um, and if you came to our annual meeting, you know, it's at a a new venue for the conference, um, but we've been there before. So um, it's unique in its way. It's just right at the uh, football stadium. And it's a really, it's a really unique setting. And we're excited for all of our speakers that are coming up. The staff's worked really hard in trying to get everybody um, set up for that and get some um, good breakout sessions as well as keynotes. So we'd love to see you there. Registration is still open. And uh if you have any questions about anything with the conference, or if you have any problems registering, just reach out and any one of our staff can help you. So I'm excited to, and, you know, to go through the rest of our staff and to hear from our keynote speaker. So now I'm just gonna turn it over to Brandon, who's gonna take you through the rest of the updates. Welcome everybody. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Um, we've got a great topic this month with an excellent person to speak on it. Uh, the importance of AEDs and CPR and surviving a sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, it's a timely topic. And like I said, we've got somebody who's an expert uh, to talk with us today about it. Um, so we're really excited about that. But first we do wanna go through our program updates. I'll let you know what's going on in all of our programs. Um, so with my program, the emergency care uh, program, uh, we do have some uh, member benefit classes coming up. We've got our first aid CPR AAD member benefit course on the 9th of this month. And then uh, the first aid CPR AAD instructor course is going to be in March, uh, the 29th through the 31st. Uh, and that's a great course for um, uh, bringing in first aid CPR and AAD training into your facility. It can help you get uh, that training, those skills and knowledge uh, to your people in house. Uh, slightly more cost-effective way than sending them into our, our facility for that training. Uh, so if that's something that could benefit you, uh, reach out to me with any questions you might have. Uh, some of the things that the emergency care program does have to offer, um, sales and rental of AEDs, uh, well, not rentals of AEDs, but AED trainers for your first aid CPR AED classes. But we do deal in sales of AEDs. Um, if you have questions, you need uh, assistance, don't hesitate to reach out to me, contact information there on the screen. Um, we, uh, we also will help to, you manage your AED down the road. We'll keep track of the expiration dates on your, on your units and uh, help advise when those need to be updated. Um, and we have a lot of training materials that we rent, uh, whether it be the CPR mannequins or the AED trainers. Uh, we also sell the student manuals for the first aid CPR program, as well as training kits, uh, face shields, pocket masks, all kinds of stuff that you could, uh, that you might need in emergency care. And now we're gonna turn over to Hannah and Annabelle. Hello everyone. Um, we just wanna give a few updates on our department as well with the um, MSHA and occupational department. Uh, first off, we just have the refinery department where we've got uh, our basic orientation plus, which we do um, every Tuesday, um, um, every other week, as well as UITC, which is a program we're currently trying to build. 
um, um, build out and just kind of grow when it comes to being able to provide more niche um, training for some of these companies in the area that could really, um, um, really could use it. Um, other than that, um, when it comes to those that are interested more in BOPR, that's um, weekly, uh, that's weekly at the computer lab, um, just based off availability for what we have, just feel free to call in for that. I think the computer lab will kind of get into it a little bit more. Um, but those are the main things, uh, the main things for the refinery is just um, keeping in mind it's on those Tuesdays and um, sometimes people get a little bit confused um, if they send some of their staff to do the BOPR and some of their staff to do BOP. Um, just note that um, BOP would be at like 6.30 a.m. just to get it registered for the 7 a.m. class and then BOPR would be at 8.30. Um, and then we've got our um, MSHA classes. So we've got our um, web-based eight-hour surface refresher and 24-hour um, new minor class. Uh, so those, um, we're trying to send out more notifications just to let people know and keep in mind that um, some people will kind of go a little bit past the year mark. Um, if you're needing those um, surface refreshers, just, just note it, we, you have to get it done by the end of that month in order to um, maintain it. Because the, um, the point of it is, is for you to be able to get all the updates that have happened that previous year and you can get them throughout the year. But if you'd like to take it with us, just keep in mind, it's by that end of that month that you took your last refresher or your 24 hour new minor. Um, and then besides that, um, we've also been trying to grow out the underground and 32-hour underground new minor. Um, just keep in mind as well, um, sometimes people are taking both underground and surface um, for their refreshers or their underground. And sometimes we are able to kind of blend it a bit because there is some overlap with both of those classes. So if you're taking the surface and you've taken it recently with us under our training plan with our instructors in the past six months, we can get you into um, an underground class uh, and, uh, for a refresher and you just have to take like half of it and, and you would just register. So there's some options with that um, to note. And then our introduction to work environment tour. Um, keep in mind, we host that on about every other week on Saturdays, but if you're in a situation where you're needing to expedite that or you need it on a different day, uh, we do offer it as an onsite as well. Um, at a pretty good price point, it's just the instructor's hours plus a little bit of overhead and we can make it kind of a customized um, uh, um, and get it well for you to make kind of a customized uh, introduction to work environment tour so you can get on the site. Um, other than that, um, our, we've got our advanced safety certificate. So we've been doing our packaging options with that. Um, uh, advanced safety has been growing. A lot of people have been showing interest. It's been a really incredible um, just to see it flourish and um, it get more people signed up than ever. Um, it makes sense. It's such a great way to certify yourself and just to show your safety knowledge. If your company's already investing in you to do safety trainings, why not um, actually get a certificate? Why not actually work towards something? It, um, and there's just ways that we've had it stacked so that you can get it done within um, a couple, you know, um, within a much more reasonable amount of time um, and a lot more efficiently. And then our OSHA compliance certificate is a great one too. OSHA cards are for life. OSHA is a huge part of safety. And I think it's such a great certificate to consider when you're um, 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 to, um, just to show your knowledge and experience as a safety professional. And then of course, we've already touched in on occupational safety essentials, but just a really great way for your companies that maybe um, you, maybe you're just starting, maybe you need kind of a 101, maybe you just need kind of an open door, um, like an open, like a, an expansive overlook of safety. It's just a great way to get your feet wet, to see some of our services and just to kind of learn about safety as a whole. So that one's coming up and we offer it monthly as well. Um, and then just the advanced safety certificate is the one that we just hit on. I think it's a really, um, it's one that you might consider as well because um, um, we actually do offer a scholarship for it. So if you're in a situation where maybe a branch of your company or your company, um, your company or a branch of your company is under 250 employees, um, if you fill out that scholarship form, we can give you half off on those. So a lot of times if you're, you yourself or your company um, is interested, but maybe you're a bit of a smaller shop, um, we can absolutely um, process that immediately and get you part of our um, our, of our grant money to um, be able to get that training that you need. Um, other than that, I think those are the main things for our department. Um, we just love any questions you have. We've been trying to um, just build out our department and our program. Feel free to reach out to us at any point. Um, 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 even if you're unsure, like uh, sometimes we're still able to make things work um, for you um, just based off of your needs. So you dream it and we'll try to create it. But that's, um, I think that's it for ours. Uh, moving on, we're going to be going to our defensive driving department. And we got Nicole Nicole leading the people there. Thanks, Nicole. Hello, my name is Nicole and I'm covering for our traffic manager, Michael Stone, while he's out of the office. Um, some of you may not know that Utah Safety Council actually started at only a defensive driving school. So keep us in mind when you're sending your employees over for other trainings for any traffic needs, we can help them with that as well. Um, 
Here are a list of our classes in February. We do have different formats that these classes are offered in. So if you look at February 6th, that would be an in-person course. Our in-person courses are instructor-led and they are a four-hour course. If you're looking for an instructor-led course, but more in the comfort of your own home, we do offer a Zoom um, with our Zoom courses. Again, they are instructor-led and it is the four-hour course as well. With our Zoom and our in-person courses, we offer those in Salt Lake, Logan, Layton, Lehigh, and Washington City. We also offer an online course. This is geared more to those that want to do it at their own pace. If they're not able to sit down for a full four hours and do it, you can do it you know, an hour here and there and do that at your own pace. Another great option we do have available is on site. So if you're wanting to send a few employees and get them registered for this course, we can actually schedule an on site and then you can utilize your membership benefits to get that special pricing on that. If you'd like more information about our traffic courses, you can go ahead and visit us at utahsafetycouncil.org, or you can even reach out to Michael Stone. He will be back and be on this next month. So um, give us a call or reach out by email. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the lab. So Justin and I work together in our computer lab. Our computer lab is a geared towards web-based trainings. And so if you're needing to get some of those courses done, they're usually about a year, they expire within a year. So if you're needing to renew those, reach out to us, we can get you scheduled. We offer hundreds of different types of courses. So even if you're not sure if we offer the course, please reach out to us. We can look into it and see about getting it here in our facility. Um, one of the main courses that we do offer would be our basic orientation plus refresher. And we do have our labs open Monday through Friday from eight to four. However, please reach out to us before coming in so that we can make sure that the lab is not full or that it's not being utilized for other purposes. Um, if you want any more information on that, please feel free to reach out to me. My information is below and you can also reach out to Justin as well. I'll go ahead and turn you over to Brandon now and he'll go over some information about our guest speaker today. Thanks, Nicole. So today we are pleased to have Josh Shelton of Interspect Medical with us. Uh, Josh has over 27 years of experience in the medical industry, having worked at Physio Control, Access Cardio Systems, Phillips Healthcare, and now at Interspect Medical. Since the age of 18, he's been thrust into cardiac resuscitation and the benefits of CPR AED use on individuals. He has personally been involved in key medical director leadership across the West Coast, around successful AED programs and in helping to improve systemic responses. Uh, having a family and three kids has helped him progressively educate the younger generation of the importance of CPRs and AEDs. Josh loves what he does and encourages all to join the fight against sudden cardiac arrest. And with that, I am now going to turn the time over to Josh. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate that. I am always impressed by the, uh, you know, everything that the Utah Safety Council does. Uh, it kind of got a, uh, a niche in everything, which is fantastic. Um, today, my focus is obviously going to be talking about the AEDs in the workplace. I think everyone's probably heard by now uh, or seen on TV uh, what has happened with some of the, uh, the NFL players. Uh, and if you haven't been staying close to that. I, I'm going to give during this presentation, I'll give some more information um, to that extent so you can get some of the details. Uh, what I was planning to, on going through here was sudden cardiac arrest, which is also known as SCA. Uh, you know, when you call 911, what actually happens? And then we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the best AEDs. I, I always get this question over my 27 years. You know what, you know, Josh, what is the best AED? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to talk about what some of the AED brands are doing. Technology today has advanced. Uh, some of these devices are not only doing their own self-testing, but they're doing so much more. Uh, and we're going to go into more details with that as well. And then we're going to end with some of the awareness. I, I'm hoping that everyone takes away from today's presentation that, you know, I'm sure everyone's traveled on a flight or gone to an airport at some point in their life. The AEDs are present in those places. They're in cabinets. The more awareness that we can create, the, the more lives we can you know, potentially save. So you know, with that, I want to kind of jump into this 
you know, what is SCA, sudden cardiac arrest? So a lot of times I get this, this question that comes up, people always ask, hey, Josh, you know, you know, what's a heart attack? You know, what's sudden cardiac arrest? Do they intermingle? Uh, does one make the other one happen? So I always kind of, kind of put it in the layman terms here. A heart attack is someone that essentially still has a pulse, is still responsive, and probably still breathing. It could probably even drive themselves to the hospital. Uh, it could be having a mild heart attack right now. My arm starts to get real tight. My back starts to kind of hurt, but I'm still breathing and I'm still conscious. Those are the two things. Sudden cardiac arrest is what, if, if anybody's been you know paying attention, is just like what happened to De DeMar Hamlin. Essentially, you're there for a second and then you stop talking and everything goes down and you're out cold. Uh, so what happens? No pulse, you're unresponsive, and you're not breathing. That's the difference. So I always kind of like to lay this on the line for people so they understand those two differences. A heart attack can become sudden cardiac arrest. You know, if you you you, you kind of have those mild heart attack symptoms, and you're kind of like, ah, oh, now I worked out today, no big deal. And you've delayed those for a couple of days, that could eventually become a sudden cardiac arrest. But a sudden cardiac arrest can't become a heart attack. Once you're down, you're down. Um, and the only way to you know, effectively get someone out of a sudden cardiac arrest is with an AED. Uh, an AED actually stands for Automated External Defibrillator, if you wanted to know. Uh, the reason why um, you know, say automated is because all these devices will walk and talk you from the beginning to the end on what to do. You can't make a mistake. You can't trick it either. You can't press the shock button and say, I want to shock Jim. I don't like Jim. Uh, it will not let you. So the, the nice thing about AEDs, and that's why they're in the public, is that they're so easy to use. And, and what you probably saw on, you know, on the field over with the NFL football player, DeMar Hamlin, is an AED was there. They shocked him, and they actually did CPR. So I always say, if you have, if you have an AED and you're doing decent CPR, we got a really good chance of survival. This is kind of what it looks like uh, with sudden cardiac arrest. We call it ventricular fibrillation. Uh, you can also uh, go into ventricular tachycardia. Those are kind of the two most common things that could happen. It's where your heart kind of starts racing. So a misconception that you always hear on TV is, right, you have cardiac arrest, your heart stops. That's actually not true. Your heart starts to fibrillate. It is rapidly firing. And the four chambers of the heart are uncoordinated. So it's trying to pump blood, but it can't. It is, it's so uncoordinated that nothing's happening. So if we can't pump any blood, we can't get blood to our brain. So what happens? We go unconscious. So the key is, is that when we're in that, that fibrillation and we're sitting there rapidly firing, the only way to stop that electrical activity is with a shock. A shock actually stops that, that, that chaotic rhythm. And what we're hoping will happen is the heart will essentially come back to a normal sinus rhythm. So the heart has its own electrical system. The key is for us is just to get them out of the chaos quickly so then we can have good CPR and we can keep all the limbs and everything alive. Uh, the big thing for me in understanding this is understanding kind of the, the symptoms that you would see out there. So like I mentioned earlier, if you start to feel pain in your center of your back, your left arm starts to feel tight, your chest starts to feel like you've got a rock on it. Um, you might start to be having a mild heart attack. That might be a time to drive yourself to the hospital because you don't want that to progress and become cardiac, uh, sudden cardiac arrest. So I've kind of mentioned it a couple of times. I've talked about the NFL player. The reason I keep bringing this up because it's the biggest awareness I've seen in years. Um, you know, this is called Komodo cordis, you guys. Uh, if you've never seen or heard of Komodo cordis, what that basically is, is it's a, it's a blunt trauma to your chest, and it's right when your heart is depolarizing, so right when the heart rhythm is going down. And when that happens, it allows the heart to skip a beat. And I, I, I hate to kind of mention this to everyone, but, you know, our, our, our heartbeat, you know, beats 100,000 times a day. But if it skips once, you can go into cardiac arrest. It can happen anytime, any place, and to anyone. Uh, so I always mention this to people because they, they always we have these misconceptions. Oh, I know it's not going to be me. You know, I'm in great shape. I'm a marathon runner. I'm 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 great. Um, we have kids from ages of 13 to 18, and the last, I think it's the last eight years, uh, 
that average has been about 9,000 kids have died of sudden cardiac arrest. 9,000. Think of that. It's crazy uh, when we have a potential cure in an AED. Uh, so when you're thinking about AED, automated external defibrillator, and you're thinking about the usage of that device, I, I just want to really make this clear. It is for the lay person, the untrained user. It's designed for us in the public. You cannot make, make a mistake. If you had a device, all you would have to do is turn it on and it starts walking and talking you through from beginning to end. Um, I put down here on the thing, if you knew, no one knew what CPR stood for, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you know, the key with an AED and CPR, why those two in tandem make great success is because you think about it, the heart and your body, it's electrical and it's plumbing, right? We've got to stop electrical chaos to allow it to reboot. And what we're doing when that heart's kind of faintly rebooting is we're trying with CPR, we're trying to get the body to push more blood out into all the limbs to keep the body alive and obviously the brain. So I mentioned this, I hopefully this graphic gives you a real good idea. I'm, uh, I'm based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I can tell you guys, you know, I get it all the time. People will say, ah, Josh, you know, you know, it's not going to happen to me. This is not going to never going to happen. You know, I, I work out, I eat, eat healthy, this and that. Uh, I will always point to all the people I've met over my years from, from 13 year olds to 18 year olds that have been in my, uh, you know, when I was working for the manufacturer, we actually had you know presentations from uh, kids that have actually had sudden cardiac arrest that actually survived because of an AED. And then later they found out that those people needed an, an implantable. So an, essentially an AED internally in their body. Um, the, the sudden cardiac arrest is a, is, a, is a big meanie. He does not care who you are. It will come after male, female, young, old. Uh, it does not have any, any stereotypes. So the key is, is being able to recognize symptoms. If we can recognize symptoms, we got a better chance. Now, I will mention this because I, I, I always like to, does drinking, smoking, uh, being overweight, all that help? No, it doesn't help. But the key is, is that we, there's no been, there's no diagnostic that has told us that, you know, those are keys to, you know, causing sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, there have been, if you ever do a Google chat or go on YouTube, you can click in AED saves and you will see from soccer players to kids playing volleyball that are literally standing there for one second and then just go completely down and hit their heads right on the ground, smack. Um, and they're in fantastic shape. So I, I just want to make sure everyone is, you know, really hammering this in your head that this thing is it has been around for years. It is something that uh, the only way to, to cure it, it essentially is with a shock quickly and with decent CPR. So I kind of, I've talked about this with this slide with the heart attack and the plumbing. I'm just going to throw this up because I wanted people to kind of see some of the, you know, different symptoms that kind of look out for. Um, these are things that we're, you know, we're always trying to address when in, in my field, we're always trying to address it with uh, from the schools that we that we deal with, to the casinos, to the airports, to the uh, you know the ones I you know, work with, like a Legionnaire, uh, and even like the MGM. So the the key is is here that the more awareness that we provide, the better chance that we have having someone actually do something and help and actually save a life. This is a great graphic here, um, and I hope this really gets all the points across. So if you take house fires, cancer, automobile, automobile accidents, and you total all those up, that doesn't even come close to what sudden cardiac arrest does every single year. It kill, kills an average of 365,000 people to upwards of 425,000 because it obviously changes every year. But the key is, is that you know, that is a very, very high number and we have a potential cure. We just got to get people to take it. Uh, the, the key is, is right now, the national success rate from sudden cardiac arrest, this should probably disappoint everybody. It's 8%. When I started, it was five. And I've been doing this 27 years. We've been putting AEDs everywhere. We've been trying to train, educate, just tells you that there's just so many other places that we haven't gotten to, uh, you know, out, out in the public. The key is, is that that's typically where this is happening. And obviously people, you know, whether you're at your home, 
Or for instance, you're at a casino and uh, you're sleeping in the bed. I, I will bring this up as an example. Uh, I get a lot of calls from uh, in my customer, the MGM, where we've had um, we've had deaths actually up in the rooms and loved ones that were sleeping next to it. You know that that person uh, said, "No, no, no, they were snoring. They were snoring." But people don't realize that sometimes when that happens, when you think it's a snore, it's actually not. It's actually what we call the last breath. Uh, it's where your lungs are being squeezed and the last breath is coming out of your body. Uh, so they've probably gone into sudden cardiac arrest. It is something that just happens. There's, you know, there's no stopping it uh, outside of once they go into that cardiac arrest, noticing it quick and then implementing an AED. This one is, uh, this slide is uh, very particular to me because you can imagine you know, 27 years of doing this, uh, all the people I've talked to in regards to, you know, responses, you know, I have some facilities that say, oh, you know, the fire department, they're, they're two minutes away. They're literally right in our, you know, backyard, so to speak. Uh, the first thing I'll mention about that is even if they were in your backyard or next door, when you call 911, it goes to dispatch. Dispatch then goes to the closest person uh, or agency. And, and what happens from there is if it is in your backyard, they cannot, per their protocols, they cannot just run over to you. They have to follow a protocol that says, okay, now we got to load the truck, grab all our stuff, drive to the front of your building, unload, take all our stuff, and then go into your, into your building. You can see that that takes time. Nothing against fire and EMS. They're doing everything that they possibly can. But the one thing that they can't do is, and I'm going to give a Back to the Future reference, they can't go back in time unless they have a DeLorean, which, uh, you know, quite frankly, I don't think anybody has. But if you do, call me because I would like one. Uh, but the key is, is back to the, you know, going, going back in time to change all this is the only way to actually justify and actually changing the actual success rate. The average time, on a 911 call is about 10.6 minutes. Uh, you're going to see from this next graph that I show you that 10.6 minutes doesn't give us a really good chance of survival. I have ridden on calls with fire and EMS before. Uh, I can tell you uh, they can't bring this up, but when we get dispatched, you know, call in and they say unresponsive, uh, loved one is doing CPR and an AED is present. It feels, and I say it feels like the car moves faster that the ambulance moves back because they feel like they got a potential chance of survival. Uh, when we get the dispatch call where it says unresponsive, loved one doesn't feel comfortable doing CPR, no AED present. I can tell you it's a it's somewhat of a downer because a lot of those guys have been on those calls and they know what they're going to be doing, which is CPR for a long period of time and trying to get someone out of a rhythm that uh, is probably faint. Uh, so the, the key for us is one, getting AEDs out there, and two, cutting this time down so we get better success. This is it right here. You have sudden cardiac arrest. Imagine having a stopwatch in your hand and clicking it. If you can respond in under three minutes, for instance, you have an AED in your facility and you can respond in under three minutes and deliver a shock, look at your chances of survival. Almost 75% or better. It's just tremendous. If we don't have an AED and we're not even doing uh, CPR and we're just waiting for fire and EMS, look at it, 10 minutes, we got less than 10% chance. So in all honestly, I always tell people, you know, having an AED on site is the best thing you could do because you're giving someone a chance. It may not save their life, but it will give them the best opportunity to be saved. So I mentioned earlier about... Uh, the, the best AED, I get smiling about this because it's funny. Uh, I, we, we, we got all the AEDs out there and there's probably 10 different versions that you can get. And I will show a picture of them all so you guys can see. But for me, because I know it's time related with sudden cardiac arrest, I can tell you for me, it's always the closest one to me. I don't care what brand, what it is. If it can defib you know, defibrillate and do a shock, that's the one I want because I know that time is the only big impact here. If I can get an AED on to me, my chest faster than I could any other one, that's the one I want. Um, the other one is AEDs obviously save lives. I, I try to tell people this all the time. If you're buying an AED for your facility, the one thing you should also think about, especially now, 
Uh, that, that's great. It's fantastic to have it in your facility. What do you have at your home? What are we doing to protect our families that do other things or do activities? I have carried an AED in my car for, oh man, for the almost the full length of 27 years. I think I started probably, I probably have had it for at least 24. And I will tell you, I've deployed my device three times uh, and we've had two saves. Um, the key is with these devices is they make a difference. Now, I think about that three deployments and you know, over a 27 year period, I think to myself, wow, that's not that many. It's not, but I think about those people that, that were involved in those instances if they didn't have me around, or if I didn't have that device, what would, have, what would have been like? Now, I've also deployed my device many other times where it wasn't used for uh, sudden cardiac arrest, but I still brought it out. My, uh, my daughter plays flag football here in Las Vegas. Two girls had collided, hit heads. One was you know, conscious and you know, was you know, talking to us. The other one was not, and I didn't see too much movement. I ran and grabbed my AED. And that was the first thing I could think of. I got to be there just in case something happens. Um, and luckily, you know, she started mumbling, started talking to us, started coming through. The other one was when I was on a freeway and a, a truck had actually tipped in front of me. And the, I was trying to get the guy out of the car. And I can just tell you there, I, first thing I went for is my, in my car was a tire iron to break his glass to pull him out because I couldn't climb to the top of it. And what I found in my car was my AED. And I said, well, these things are built to be indestructible. So the first thing I did is, well, let's do the test. So I took it, smashed the glass, got him out, and pulled him out. Um, so there's other instances where an AED has been very, very helpful. Now, being connected to the Safety Council, I, I can tell you guys they do, they do a gambit of things. Uh, but, you know, the AEDs is a big portion as well. You know, they have access to all, all the devices, new and certified pre-owned as well. Um, I, what I'm hoping from, from this presentation is you start to, you feel the little bit of my energy kind of reflecting on you, which is, you know, we got to make a difference. I mean, there's too much stuff going on in the world where AEDs, I've been, you know, we've been talking about this since the 80s, 1980s, and now we're in 2023. These things should be everywhere and everyone should know what they do and how they do it. Um, I, I personally believe that they they make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And we could probably line up a lot of a lot of young ones uh, from that age from 13, to 18, where an AED was deployed, shocked and got them back. And if they didn't have it, they wouldn't be here today. So these are kind of the manufacturers. You got Philips, uh, Zoll Medical, who now owns Cardiac Science. They purchased them. Uh, Stryker, who now owns Physio Control, my old company, and uh, they also own HeartSign, and then there's DFib Tech. Those are kind of your players in the AED world. There are a couple newer ones that are coming out, um, you know, some that are going to be, you know, a little bit different. The key is, is that, you know, once again, the, the best AED is the closest one. Here is the picture of many of the different devices. Now, I'll get back to it and I'm going to keep repeating it because I like to try to hammer home points. If one of these were in my office and I went down, I mean, that's the one that wants to be used. It doesn't matter which one it is. As long as one of them is being deployed uh, and actually doing a defibrillation on me, that's what I need. All these devices are successful. Even the older ones, they, they can still manage to defibrillate and shock. The key is, is obviously if you see something, you know, do something. Uh, it's very similar to what we hear in the airport. If you see something, say something. Uh, you know, AEDs, you can't harm them. I can't sit there and press a shock button right there on the, one of those devices and trick it and say, no, 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 let's shock them. Don't like them. Don't like them. It will not defibrillate. It will only shock someone that needs it. So once those pads are on the chest, uh, it's going to do an analysis and determine if they need it. And if it doesn't, it's going to coach you on CPR. You know, how terrific is that? So I, I mentioned um, the smart AEDs. What I can tell you on, you know, these these devices are some of the the newer technology that's come out. So all AEDs have a function where they're doing their own self test self testing. There is it's low maintenance. You don't have to do much to these. If there's a pad and a battery, usually those have expiration dates. The safety council track those, alert you prior to, so you're always staying in the green. Meaning green is good. Uh, but there are some newer devices that now what they'll do is they're commuting through Wi-Fi and it's something that you can log into your computer and it actually will tell you things are good. 
instead of having to walk by it. So that's some of the technology that's coming that uh, essentially people are looking for. Because if you think about it, during the COVID era, what happened? You know, all of us kind of started working at home. So we didn't have eyes on devices. So what the manufacturers started to, to do was to create technology that would allow us functions where if we have smaller teams to manage a device, uh, then we want to, you know, and they have 20 sites. I want to have a device that can be, I could log in my computer and I could see all 20 devices in the green saying pads and batteries are good. Uh, and that's the best thing ever. Most devices, a pad has either a two to a three year expiration and a battery, uh, typically a four year expiration installed. So, you know, people ask this all the time when I get the device and I've activated my device, Josh, is there anything else to do? Nope, that's it. And I know it's crazy because you've spent the money to buy a device and put it on a wall, but the idea is we're hoping you never have to use it. But whether it's tomorrow, uh, the next day, four weeks from today, five years, 10 years, when that time when it's called upon to be used, I will tell you, it gives someone a much better chance of survival. And more than likely, it's probably going to save their life. So... This is the the last thing I kind of wanted to end on uh, before we go into like any questions. I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, and there's no dumb question. I've heard them all, so you know, don't hesitate. The, the the big thing I I went to is I, I I'm I'm always looking at kind of where awareness is and how things are going in, in the public's eye. Uh, I, I've talked to many different people from AHA to you know, the Safety Council and others. The the amount of awareness that that, def uh, that football player, DeMar Hamlin, has caused has created such a fury of people saying, I'm no longer on the fence. I'm jumping in. I'm getting a device. And not only am I doing that, I'm getting one for my home or to keep in my car all the time it is probably the, the biggest change I've ever seen. It, it has caused something that uh, that I never thought I would see, which is, you know, having this 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 highlighted awareness that uh, we haven't seen in the industry since AEDs first came out. It, let's just be honest that, that this thing has really driven it. Now, I want to mention this because a lot of people don't know this. I respect the fact that we're highlighting DeMar Hamlin and we're doing all this, but what people don't realize that day that DeMar Hamlin went down because sudden cardiac arrest kills 365,000 people a year. That's a thousand people a day. The one thing we didn't highlight was the 999 other people that died that day because of sudden cardiac arrest. So once again, it's great that we, we highlight DeMar Hamlin and we get the awareness out there, but we're also kind of missing the, the big picture. This is happening everywhere and to all people. It's not just our star athletes. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big time and a big chance to actually make a difference in our community and you know, kind of pair up with the fire and EMS. Trust me, those guys, when they hear that we've, you know, you've got an AED or you, you've, you've learned CPR, they get excited about it because they know they've got better chances in those areas to have survival later down the road and have someone actually have a good quality of life. So I want to, I want to thank everybody for being on this call. I appreciate it. I probably went over my time a little bit, but I get excited about this stuff and I really, I really do, do believe in what we do. Um, I kind of put this up there, the, the plan, prepare and respond, uh, you know, you know, where to place AEDs. If you ever have questions about it, Utah Safe, to, you know, Brandon Stone can help you out with that. You know, preparing, you know, training on CPR and AED procedures that you should do, you know, you know every year or every quarter. Uh, there are videos, in-service videos for all the AEDs, and they're all online that you can literally use all the time when you buy a device to keep it refreshed in your brain. Um, the last thing is respond. If you have a device, don't hesitate to use it. And, and we say this to all the schools that we work with. Um, when it comes to, you know, deploying the device, they've asked us, well, what if we come across a kid that's in PE and fainted? Deploy the AED. You don't know if he fainted. So once you get there, you can determine that. And if you've screamed and said, hey, are you okay? Hey, are you okay? And you're not getting any response, me, the AED is being deployed. I'm taking the pads out. I'm putting it on his chest. I'm slamming those babies on there to make sure they stick. I still don't, he's still unresponsive and I'm still not getting anything. The AED's on. It's going to tell me if he needs a shock. And if he needs a shock, we're going to hit it. And if it doesn't need a shock, it's going to coach me through CPR 
it'll actually say if needed start CPR and then uh, you know many of them will have a, a metronome a doink 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 noise to follow for your compressions so these things are super smart it's like having a paramedic in a box so I, I hopefully I've kind of downplayed the the fact that AEDs are just super friendly easy to use and the the information part about you know getting more AEDs into our communities. So with that, Brandon, I uh, appreciate the time. I will take any questions that anybody has. We really appreciate you coming on, Josh. A lot of really great information. I do have a couple of questions. Um, so my first question is, can, can I get in trouble for using a defibrillator? Can I do it wrong? Can I get in trouble? And can I get in trouble if I don't use it? Ooh, that's a, those are good questions. So if you have a defibrillator, I will tell you, so right now, if you have a defibrillator, yes, you do want to respond with it. Could there be liability if you don't respond with a defibrillator? Yes, there could be. Uh, there's always an open door for that. And the reason why I say that is because if you have a life-saving tool, and for instance, if, my, if I walked into your facility or, and I went down, the first thing my wife would do is say, I, AEDs have been out since the 80s, 80s. Why don't you have one? And that would be highlighted in that, that, you know, that lawsuit. Now, if you deployed the AED and it didn't save my life, there is no lawsuit. You did everything possible. There's not been one lawsuit to date that has actually occurred for that. Uh, and then the opposite side is if you deployed the AED, saved my life, and everything went well, you just think of it this way. If I was a customer or if I was an employee, uh, I'm more likely to be excited about working uh, at, that, at that position, knowing that we have that piece of equipment because now I get to go see my family. That, that to me is uh, pretty exciting. So quite frankly, there, are been, there have been zero lawsuits when it comes to uses of AEDs versus there have been lawsuits where someone doesn't have an AED. So I have no AED on my site. You're more liable because quite frankly, the AEDs have been out there for so long and they, it, it's, it's as similar as having a fire extinguisher. Hopefully I answered that good enough. No, that was great. And if any of the of the people uh, online watching have any questions, please feel free to put them in the in the chat, and we'll get those questions to Josh. Um, I did want to ask: um, Does does someone having a heart attack need an AED? Great question. Um, could you? I mean, and I've heard I've heard this many times. So if I had my device and I was having a mild heart attack, I might hook it up to me. I probably would why I was driving myself to the hospital. And the reason why is because I'd wanted to, you know, analyze. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back there. I'm probably not going to drive myself, probably have my wife drive. So if I do go in, I, we don't crash the car um, if I do have a sudden cardiac arrest. So the key is, is that I would probably hook it up just to monitor me while I'm going to the hospital. And then once I get there, obviously I could take it off, but I, I would want to be able to protect myself just in case. Because remember, it's only going to shock if it needs to. Outstanding. Appreciate that. Um, we have had a request. Uh, would you be comfortable sharing your slides with one of our attendees or oh, me yeah. sharing them? Yeah, Brandon, feel uh, all the slides. Feel free to. So, I mean, that's it's open knowledge. And I, I'll just uh, I'll mention this, too. If you got if anyone's ever you know, want to get more details and the funnest thing you could do is, you know, you want to use Google to your advantage. Type into Google AED and saves or AED law enforcement or AED in uh, public. You will see a laundry list of links come up from not only saves from police officers to schools to gyms. It is it is probably one of the most inspiring thing. And then uh, because you, you know, typically we're seeing more more saves than we are uh, you know deaths. And the the key is that this is something that once again creates awareness. We really appreciate your time, Josh. It's uh, It's been terrific. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, with that, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up uh, this uh, month's Start With Safety. Uh, just a, a quick reminder that uh, we'll be back next month, March 1st, uh, with Robert Gardner. Uh, he'll be talking about the cost of safety. Uh, so make sure to tune in for that. Um, and uh, yeah, if nobody has any questions, we'll see you next month. Thank you very much.